Well, welcome everybody to the YouTube video that you make when you have no other YouTube videos to make. A drunk Q&A at 11.30 in the morning. Let's get into it. So full disclosure, I filmed for like 45 minutes and then realized I wasn't recording any audio. During that time, I drank two IPAs and I'm pretty much done with the third now, so... I'm more tossed than a Caesar salad on a fucking Tuesday. And it's gonna make for some spicy video content, probably. So, uh, yeah, uh, things are bound to get dangerous, and I hope you stay stay strapped aboard for the train ride thing. All right, let's jump into question number one. Where in Washington do I live? Uh, just outside of a small town called Gig Harbor. Camera recommendations for starting out in medium format. Well, I'd probably recommend starting with 645, I guess. Mamiya 645, Bronica ETRS, both great cameras, and then just work your way up 6667, whatever you feel comfortable with. What inspires my photography approach? Growing up, surrounded by the great outdoors, I've just always had a vast appreciation for the mountains, and that definitely transfers over into my photography. Dream place to shoot? Well, I have way too many to count, but right now I can't seem to get Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada out of my mind place looks absolutely gorgeous. What do you do with photos you think deserve to live beyond Instagram but not a zine? Well, usually I print them out and keep them for myself or I give them to family members or something like that. Favorite film stock? Portrait 800 rated at 400. Yes, I am a hipster god. Why do you film and photograph alone? <sighs> I think it's mainly because I just enjoy operating at my own pace, but I also feel kind of a subconscious distraction when I'm with other people and I think it affects the way that I shoot. Best white claw flavor? Lime. Always has been. Dream film camera. Probably a Mamiya 7 just because I do a lot of hiking and traveling. It's a travel friendly camera that still delivers that beautiful 6x7 negative. Have you ever tried instant film? Yes, I have a Polaroid camera that I love to shoot with from time to time. It's quite enjoyable actually. Would you shoot an entire roll of mirror up shots? Yes, I've been meaning to do this for such a long time because it was requested like five months ago but it will inevitably happen at some point, I promise. Do I still have the first roll of film I ever shot? <sighs> yep, right here, baby. Portra 400 through the Bronica SQ. Five out of 12 photos were blanks. Do I rate my films at box speed? I rate everything at box speed except Portra 800 I rate at 400 and Delta 3200 I rate at 1600. Photographers that inspire you. This changes relatively frequently for me, but recently I've really been enjoying Lindsay Adario. I believe it's pronounced. She's an American photojournalist who frequently documents war and humanitarian conflicts. Her work is jarring yet beautiful and some of the best documentary imagery I've ever seen. Another is Paolo Pellegrin. He is a photojournalist as well who covered many of the humanitarian conflicts of the past two decades. I particularly enjoy the way he employs his style throughout his work, utilizing motion blur and harsh contrast to aid in his storytelling. Tips for organic Instagram growth? Honestly, I have no idea. I think the majority of my Instagram followers comes directly from my YouTube, so I'm probably not qualified to give any advice in this field. Advice for someone wanting to start a YouTube channel? Set a certain goal for the amount of videos you want to make in a certain time period. Just set a schedule for yourself and stick to that schedule because consistency is absolutely key when it comes to YouTube. Were you nervous when you first started your YouTube channel? No, because I had no intentions for it other than it just being something I do for fun and I still try to make sure that principle is true to this day. Does making one video per week diminish your love for photography? Not particularly, but I will say that over the past couple of months, it seems like I'm only going out to shoot when I need to film a YouTube video because it's so hard for me to justify shooting film when it's not for making a YouTube video just because of how expensive it is. This is one of the reasons why I'd love to have a digital camera just to carry with me wherever I go so that I can kind of document everyday life and not have to pay for every shot that I take. Besides the Canon AE-1, what 35mm camera do you recommend? Well, I really enjoy Olympus's 35mm cameras, the 35 line, the SP, the RC, the DC, those are all great cameras, as well as the OMs, you know, the OM10s, 2s, 3s, those are all good as well. Does music inspire my photography? Absolutely. I love listening to the band Camp whenever I'm in the mountains. 
kind of a folk genre, but I really love their style and it kind of lends, they kind of lend themselves to the mountain-esque type images that I love to make. And then I also really enjoy listening to movie scores, uh, film scores, and then kind of reimagining what shots I would get based on that specific soundtrack. You're put on death row, what meal do you request? There used to be this food cart in Portland, Oregon called the Shea Cafe, and they had this breakfast burrito contraption. I mean, it was sirloin steak, two eggs, french fries, cheddar cheese, caramelized onions, and their special sauce, mohawk sauce, which you had to get extra of, by the way. I mean, this thing, it was godsend, especially after a rough Friday night, you'd go and smash your face into one of those things. Oh my god. All was well with the world when you were eating one of those bad boys. How old are you and how long have you been shooting film? 23 years old, been shooting film for just under two years now. If you could photograph somebody famous, who would it be and why? Anthony Bourdain. He has piqued my interest for a long time now. There's something really fascinating about his gentle sternness and I have a vast admiration for how he documented the world and brought people together through food. His principles are going to be a strong foundation in not only my photography, but my life as well. How did I get into film and what was my first film camera? In early 2019, my dad gifted me a Bronica SQ. He knew I loved documenting my life on you know, digital mediums uh, through video and photo and he thought I might like to give film a try and boy was he right. What did you study in college and what do you do for work? Well, I graduated from the University of Portland with a degree in marketing and up until about a month ago, I worked for Red Bull on their marketing team, but COVID snatched that one away. Cheers to COVID, baby. Mm -hmm. But yeah, now I'm big time unemployed, so rock on. Do you make a living on YouTube? Absolutely not. It's not even close. No. How do you afford to shoot film all the time? Well, the small amount of money that I do make on YouTube and through my print sales goes directly back into filming these videos and taking the photos. How do I stay motivated to shoot as often as I do? At the beginning of this year, I told myself I was going to make a video every week for an entire year. So just holding myself accountable to that schedule, as well as being surrounded by the amazing landscapes we have here in Washington has made that possible. How did I create the scroll sequence of the desert photos? I'll try to explain this as briefly as I can. Basically, made a, make a huge Photoshop document. You import all the photos you want into that document, space them apart evenly, and then you export that into After Effects where you keyframe the X position uh, and then add some keyframe interpolation after that to smooth things out and there you go. When will you be getting a 4x5 camera and what are your thoughts on large format over overall? Probably not going to get a 4x5 camera anytime soon. To be quite honest, I have mad respect for everybody shooting large format. I think it's incredibly intriguing. I just, uh, I just really enjoy 6x7 at the moment and I don't need another format draining my bank account. How do I find places to hike? I use a website called All Trails. They also have an app, they're global extremely convenient. What are your photography goals? Making a photo book project, etc. I'm currently developing the idea around my first legitimate photo project, which is probably going to take the shape of a book. SLR or rangefinder? I haven't shot with a ton of rangefinders, but from my experience, I do prefer SLRs. Oh, God damn. <clears throat> Favorite album of this year? Detroit 2 by Big Sean. Signal going in and out, swimming at the house. What is stopping you from developing and scanning at home? Ah, this was such a popular question, rightfully so. A couple of things, both actually kind of the same thing, I guess. But the first is just the learning curve. I know I, it's going to take so long before I get results that I'm happy with and that are consistent. And then two, the, just that amount of time, uh, the amount of time that it's going to take to get to the point where I am you know, satisfied with the results that I'm getting, that's going to mean less time that I can spend out taking the actual pictures. But when I move into my new place, the beginning of next year, I definitely want to set up a kind of a small makeshift dark room and just be more involved in the entire process. Favorite brewery in the Northwest. If we're talking favorite beer from a Northwest brewery. You're looking at it right here at contact Haze by Elysian. God damn, this is good beer. But if we're talking like favorite brewery to just go and spend an afternoon at with some buddies or whatever, then probably Pelican Brewing out at Cannon Beach because amazing brewery with good food, good beer, and you're in Cannon Beach. Best of both worlds. IPA or lager, choose wisely, mountain man. IPA, my friend, all day long. Any miserable hikes you've been on? Yes, uh, in the spring of 2019, 
I went on a hike completely unprepared, no breakfast, running on no sleep. My water bottle had fallen out of my backpack at some point throughout the hike. And about six miles in, my body had completely given up on me. There was not another soul on the trail that day. And I was convinced that I was going to die. I ended up passing out about three times on the hike out. And it fucked me up mentally for a long time. Many, many months to follow. Uh, I was just not in the right headspace. And I still kind of deal with some residual mental effects from that very hike. What is the craziest hike you have planned? The Enchantments in Washington. Been wanting to do it for a long time. And one of the next couple of summers is probably going to be when I check it off my list. Any plans to visit Europe after the pandemic? And if so, where? Absolutely. First stop, Lofoten Islands in Norway because I went there a few years ago before I was shooting film. And now that I'm shooting film, I just cannot stop thinking about it. It is a absolutely beautiful place and I know I'll be able to get some incredible film images over there. So Lofoten Islands and then I'd like to just travel all over Europe to be honest with you. As many countries that I, as I can get to. And I'd love to meet up with some people uh, that follow the channel to live in Europe along the way. That would be incredibly cool. Where was your favorite place to photograph in Europe? Probably Greece, um, just because the architecture is so interesting. And not only that, the light throughout the day just seems so prime, like all the time. It's really weird. Uh, there never seems to be a bad moment to shoot photos while in Greece. Each island offers something unique. Some of my fondest memories while traveling have been in Greece. Any photography stuff on your Christmas list? Yeah, probably a legitimate light meter, not just the app on my phone. Uh, if not that, probably the 55mm lens for the Pentax 6x7. Worst film stock I've ever used. It's not the worst because I think it's actually a bad film stock. It's just the worst because it's probably my least favorite. And that's actually Ektachrome 100. I just think Fuji kills it with slide film. And uh, yeah, Ektachrome has always rendered really weird colors that I have a, a hard time working with. Do you get tired of setting up your camera, getting the shot, and then going back to pick up your camera? Gonna be a fun day of going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Not necessarily tired, I just grow more and more impatient as the day goes on, and it's hard for me to kind of take the time to set up all of those b-roll shots after a while just because I want to focus on taking the actual pictures. So I guess you could say I get tired of it, but I think it's more so just kind of an impatient thing. For you, what is the difference between film and digital? Well, there's three main things, color rendition, grain, and the shooting experience itself. I think film just kills it with all three. Color rendition is beautiful. The grain adds so much character to the images and then the shooting experience is something extremely unique. It just makes everything more methodical. And I mean, you guys have heard you know, people talk about why they shoot film. So, you know, you know the gist of it, but yeah, slower process, having a price tag attached to each shot, it really makes you think. And I've just gotten some of my, my favorite images that I've ever taken because of the shooting experience while shooting on film. Have you ever considered going digital? Yes, I have. Digital definitely has its place. Uh, for me, I think it'd be with nighttime photography just because the metering process can be meticulous and tricky when shooting nighttime photos. Having a digital camera to not have to worry about wasting frames would be extremely nice. And then as also just having the ability to shoot at higher ISOs to get the exposure time down a bit would also be extremely convenient. What do you perceive that most others don't? Very interesting question and a tough one for me to answer, but I think it comes down to the fact that I try to approach not only photography, but life in general with the most open mindset that I possibly can. Just because of photographical style, uh, you know, there's a photographical style that I don't necessarily agree with or understand. It doesn't make it stupid or wrong, right? It, it should be an opportunity for me to learn about something that I'm unfamiliar with. And this can transfer over into life principles as well, whether it be politics or religion, I think people nowadays are just so closed-minded when it comes to ideas that are not, um, you know, necessarily agreed on by themselves or the people that they sur surround themselves with. So it really doesn't lend itself to any sort of learning or progression moving forward in society and the world that we live in, which is really unfortunate. So I just try to have an open mind, whether it be photography or life. I just want to sit down with these people and have a conversation with them learn about why it is they do what they do because when it comes down to it they could be asking me the exact same thing and they could feel the same way about the style of photography that i do or the principles in life that i have 
So you're not better than anybody else. We all just need to treat people as equal and learn from one another. Have you ever been in a photographic slump and how did you get out of it? Absolutely, every winter here in Washington, the weather gets obviously rather shitty and it's hard for me to get outside and shoot the photos that I love to shoot. So it's a good opportunity to kind of change lanes with in photography, you know? If you're always outside, maybe jump inside and shoot some studio portraits or whatnot. If you're always inside, maybe jump outside and shoot some street photography. It may just open up an entire, n entirely new world of interests that you never knew you had. Street photography in your future, yes or no, and why? Yes, I've actually been thinking about this quite a bit recently. You know, if somebody asked me 30 years from now, what's your favorite photo? What's your favorite image you've ever taken? I don't think I'm going to say a landscape photo. I think it's going to be a photo of somebody else or another group of people. And that's because the relationship I have, you know, with photography right now is, is a, a lot about you know, how can the outdoors supplement my photography? But when it comes to photography itself in my life, I want that relationship to be more about how can photography supplement the interest that I have in life. And the interest that I have in life is more so traveling to different cultures throughout the world and learning about the people that reside in it. So I think, I think street photography is a good gateway and segue into what I do with into what I want to do with photography moving forward. What photo do you have the greatest emotional connection to, even if it isn't your best? Probably this photo that I took in Dublin, Ireland, just outside the iconic Temple Bar. Two gentlemen, two different generations. It speaks, it speaks a lot of words to me, just this one photo. It has a lot of meaning and it's something, it's, it's a photo that I'm gonna cherish for the rest of my life. How did you know you wanted to pursue photography? Well, it comes down to the intention that I have with it. It was never about money. It was never about recognition. It was always just about the fun of taking an image. And that is still true to this day. You know, it comes down to the actual image that I'm taking and the experience that I have while taking it. Do you compare your work or experience imposter syndrome to other YouTubers, friends, etc. At first, I absolutely did. I kind of felt like I had to fit into this box of, you know, what a film photograph should be and, and what a film photography YouTube video should look like. But after I became more comfortable with creating my videos and creating my photos, I feel like I've just kind of found my own lane to operate in. And yeah, now I feel like I can kind of shoot and, and make whatever content I'd like to make. Favorite Netflix series? The Queen's Gambit. Holy shit. I've never been hooked on a TV show like I was hooked on The Queen's Gambit. Biggest film fail you've ever learned from? Just that mentality that, oh, I'm shooting on film, it's going to be a good photo. You know, sometimes I go out and shoot in the middle of the day in harsh light and I'm, uh, I have that mentality that, oh, this is film, you know, the dynamic range is is crazy and it can handle this light I throw at it? No, it's not always the case. You know, you still have to feed film proper light and you still have to plan your shots accordingly. So try to escape that mentality that, oh, I'm shooting on film, I can throw anything at it and it'll handle it. No, that's not always how it works. Most memorable encounter with a stranger. I actually made a video about this uh, over the summer. I was out shooting in some farmlands and I was shooting this horse pasture. The owner came out and offered to bring the horses closer so that I could get some photos of them. We ended up having a really nice conversation. It was just a prime example of how photography can bring two complete strangers together, even in 2020. Really amazing. Pineapple on pizza? Yeah, absolutely. Best or worst edible experience? Oh my God. So. A couple years ago, my housemates and I tried to make some homemade edibles, firecrackers, were like, it's like when you sprinkle weed on top of a graham cracker with peanut butter on it or whatever. Then we tried to make homemade like peanut butter mixture with dab wax. And we, so we made uh, like a gram of dab wax into a peanut butter spread, put that on the graham cracker and then put the weed on top of that. And all my friends were high out of their minds. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Within an hour, I was uh, as, as sober as a gopher oddly enough so i was like oh man i probably just got a, you know like a bad section or where the the weed was mixed up you know in proportionately and i got a bad section of the graham cracker or whatever well they all asked me to drive them to mcdonald's since i was i was not high at all and so i was like yeah sure drive to mcdonald's get to the drive through window i'm going to pay and it just like a brick fucking wall like a train wreck just boom uh, oh fuck I'm high as fucking shit. Like instantly, I've never had weed hit me like that. 
And so luckily we were like two seconds away from my house. So we get back home. I sit down. I'm like, oh my God, I need to chill out. Take a bite of my McFlurry. And I felt like that cold ice cream like transfer into my bloodstream. And I became so fucking cold for some reason, just because I took one bite of a McFlurry and I'm like, oh my God, I'm fucking, I'm going to die here. I'm getting hypothermia. So I go wrap myself in a blanket in my bed and I try to close my eyes and go to sleep. And I see the universe just unfolding into my, like into my vision. Like it's like a Tron grid line, you know, like in the movie Tron with those, the grid lines, like the bikes and stuff, they ride on that huge grid. It's like that, just like pulsating throughout my vision. And I'm like, holy fuck so i go outside i try to lay down in the middle of the street at like 3 a.m and like call drunk college kids are walking by like what the fuck is that kid on and like cars driving by honking at me and shit and i'm like i need to calm the fuck down everybody get out of my way but yeah it was like two hours of just like tripping absolute sack i eventually went to bed and i woke up like as high as i would have liked to have been that previous night so yeah edibles are fucking whoo they can be a wild ride man was there ever a second passion you would have pursued if not for photography? Cliff jumping or snowboarding? Two of my absolute favorite activities. What influenced the development of your style and the transition from the action sports YouTube space to the film photography YouTube space? Well, a big development in my style came when I realized I didn't have to rely on other people's work to draw inspiration from. You know, just kind of going out and doing what I wanted to do and then bringing my film camera along on that ride helped me discover what my style really was. As far as transitioning from the action sports YouTube space to the film photography YouTube space, when I broke my back cliff jumping, I realized how unsustainable that was long term, right? Like I still deal with some residual effects from that to this day. And had I kept cliff jumping, kept snowboarding at the rate and the pace that I was, you know, I don't think I'd be in any position to even be able to photograph on a daily basis. And when it comes down to it, my true passion is really photography. And that's something that I like to pursue. So if that means, you know, transitioning transitioning from the action sports world to the film photography world, it only makes sense to do so. And the final question. When is Ricky allowed out again? Name's Ricky fucking Pilsner. Me and Ricky got something planned real soon. Don't you worry about it. Guys, thank you for tuning into this week's video, this Q&A, this degenerate Q&A that it was. I really appreciate it. Anybody who just engages with the videos and the photos that I make and, and post, it really means the world to me. Seriously, uh, I can't thank you enough. So I hope you guys had a fantastic Thanksgiving and I hope you have a great holiday season to come. Stay safe and healthy out there, everybody, and I'll catch you next week. Peace. I need to know everything. Who in the what and the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, with five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost. I need to know everything. Now you be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk. Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in talk up their body. Another one body, that's just how it go. I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes. Stay in your lane, I to stay on the go. I can to play with the pros and act like a rookie, so they overlook me. Then I double up again, none of their nose, none of them cold. They just got lucky but never adapted, so I'm to the one if it's coming to blows. My enemies cutting it close. I let them think that they got me, but what do you know? I had them beat before we ever spoke, I'm ready for smoke. I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse I'm ready for war, I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost I need to know everything